Speed and time signatures are those untranslatable qualities every medium is imbued with. Prose, comics, film, it's different for all of them. To control pacing in comics, for example, requires much more intentional effort than in film, where an audience is entirely at the mercy of the speed at which you show them the images. With comics, the reader actually has the ultimate control over the pace, and there are a ton of variables that can throw that off, so the best you can do is to try and attempt it without any full idea how each individual will respond. And as you can see, I thought Watchmen is an interesting bit of work to use as an example of showing the difference between time signatures and pacing, and even a little on structure in comics versus film, because you've got a film adaptation of Watchmen that is surprisingly similar visually, and it means I can talk about the biggest difference between the two mediums, its use of temporal control. And if we take a look at the intro for both of these works, you'll see an apparent difference immediately, in one that starts with Rorschach's narration over the street scene, whereas the film opts to go with no narration, and seeing the comedian at home himself. We have to skip a little into the film to find the narration for the opening page of Watchmen, which is actually transplanted to the scene where Rorschach enters the comedian's apartment. Rorschach's journal, October 12th, 1985. Dog carcass in alley this morning. Dire tread on burst stomach. And to read Rorschach's narration does take a while. Here in the film, it takes Jackie Earl Haley a full minute to say the dialogue from only four of those six panels. So if you break that down equally, you're looking at roughly a minute and a half to read the six panels of dialogue. The camera move in the film from the badge up to the final shot takes about 20 seconds, so you'd still be looking at holding the camera move for an extra 70 seconds. And that's a hell of a time to show one single shot in film that isn't really revealing new information, which is why in the film, they speed that portion of time up. If I slow it down for you to get a sense of how it actually have to move to fill that time, you can see it's pretty slow. So the nature of time itself means this scene has to be played out differently, and it causes the entire opening structure of the film to change too, because of that. Film's weakness is that its ability to convey movement means we, typically you know, as a mainstream audience, want to see movement. Drawing this single take out over 90 seconds would be kind of painful. In comics, we're presenting a series of still images from the scene, and we're asked by the comic to interact, because we have to read the book, so by its very existence it forces it to be an active experience as opposed to the passive experience you get watching most films. It does mean that we're able to extend this one sequence, because each image isn't moving and vanishing at the same time as processing any voiceover information we're also getting. We can read these individual images, and all the content that's packed into them, the strange shape of the vehicles, the signage, the blood, the sign, the man carrying the sign, the expression of the man cleaning the blood off the sidewalk, all of that can be read without the image rushing past you. And so what you're experiencing as a reader here is a giant combination of messages and theme. We're learning the distance from the badge all the way up to the broken window. We're seeing how the world is different and how it's subtly different. We're seeing the man walking with the sign through the blood as time passes. And we're seeing the man shouting at him who's trying to clean up the sidewalk. It means we're experiencing all of this and able to ask the question about each of these in particular. Why did that man walk through the blood? Why is the guy who works at the shop the one who's cleaning the blood up from the sidewalk? Why do those cars look different? And importantly, you know, wow, that window is a long way up. And I'm not even including the narration here for a direct example. And so when we see the same sequence in film, what do we learn here? What questions are we able to ask and what's our takeaway? Whereas with the comic, it was a real multitude of things if you, you know, wanted it to be. At this speed and pace, we're getting little more than the contextual understanding that this is a city and that this is quite high up. And it means each moment is actually fleeting. Each visual ends up meaning less and having less agency and power because we're quickly moving on to the next thing. In comics, you're working with the power of a budget-free, entirely visual approach to the way of telling your story, and it means each image can be packed with incredibly dense visuals that are easy enough to refer back to, and you can exploit this active audience. And I think that raises an interesting point about time and rhythm, because in this panel, the narration is not running at the same speed as the visuals, as it would have to in film, in which everything is synchronous. So the time signatures of these events, the visuals and the narration, they're not perfectly matched up. You know, the time existing in this panel is not the same time it would take for you to read all of that narration. And this allows a certain flexibility and freedom that cinema does not have in the same way. Let's take a look at the first page of Sin City, That Yellow Bastard, which opens up with a bunch of narration and then a single striking image that tells you so much through the relationship of these two characters and about the two characters themselves. The shot lingers as long as it needs to linger, but it's designed to tell a story through one visual. And that one visual exists in a split moment, right? It's like a freeze frame of time. And the narration is also not really an indicator of time passing. We only understand that time to have passed when we turn the page and see the next visual. The editing here is in the removal of all other instances of time. The narration exists on its own time signature, and the image we see across the spread exists in another. Both relate to each other and inform each other, but they exist in separate moments. In film, it's basically impossible to achieve that same effect, 
And so this is how the film deals with it. Just one hour to go. My last day on the job. Early retirement. Not my idea. Doctor's orders. And that shot is one whole minute long. It's broken only once for a close-up on a badge that really adds no additional detail, since that's already mentioned in the opening narration here anyway. But ultimately, it's a minute-long shot on Bruce Willis's face, as he does very, very little. We're given absolutely no additional visual information through that 60 seconds that isn't discernible from that very first shot, in that he's got a scar, you know, he's old and he's driving. And yet the film maintains that shot so we can hear the narration. And I'm thinking about the one loose end I haven't tied up. A young girl who's out there somewhere. And it doesn't work particularly successfully because in film we're absorbing sound and visuals at the same time. We don't need to ignore one to take in the other, whereas in comics, if we're reading the caption box, we're not reading the image. And if we're reading the image, then we're not reading the caption box at the same time. You know, we're progressing forward and we're isolating each of those elements and looking at the visuals, but we can't do both concurrently, which links back to the idea of separate time signatures. In film, time and movement end up being really your biggest strengths, but also your biggest weaknesses when knowing what you can and can't fit into your frame and how that will actually impact the story. In some cases, it means allowing the world to breathe in other ways and changing how direct you target your message for the mainstream audience. And the beauty of comics? Well, it's a relationship with your reader that is much more back and forth and interactive. And Watchmen understands that incredibly well in its slow burn opening page, and so does Sin City. And it's able to get a reader thinking, it's able to get a reader being active, and it's able to balance multiple narratives all in one very simple opening sequence in both of those examples. And that is where the true power comes from storytelling in comics when compared to other mediums. Thanks for watching. Since we're on the subject of Watchmen, I've got a new podcast called Under the Hood with Kieran Shiak, where we discuss a single page of Watchmen every single week. It's kind of crazy, but it's good fun. You can find it at Under the Hood Pod on Twitter and on iTunes and other podcast services. Strip Panel Naked continues to exist weekly thanks to the amazing support of people at patreon.com slash stripppanelnaked, where for your support you can get access to exclusive new content every single week. For more comics talk and analysis, you can find me on Twitter at Hassan Oe. And finally, hit subscribe and that little notification bell to keep up to date with all the latest episodes, and we'll see you next time.